So when it comes to solo killing with Katarina, you have to understand a couple things. There's going to be a lot of factors to a solo kill and you should try to, you know, lean into those factors to try to get yourself advantages and try to put yourselves in a position to actually kill your enemy laner. A couple things you have to look out for is the runes that you're using, the runes that the enemies have, what champion are they playing, how do you play around that champion, and like where you are strong, like for example your level spikes. So with all those put together, you can actually create a solo kill, so here's a couple examples. Climbing in league can be difficult. Sometimes you don't know what you're doing wrong. Luckily, we have Frag Sheets. Frag Sheets is a revolutionary tool that analyzes you and all the games you've played. It will then use that data to show you exactly what you need to improve and climb. You can see stats, helpful tips, and also recommended roles and champions that best suit your playstyle. Frag Sheets can also analyze each of your games as you grind, showing you what you did well and where you need to improve. Try Frag Sheets for yourself. It might just be what you need. The link will be in the description below. Alright, so first off, we have the Kiana matchup. So against the Kiana matchup, it's a lot about dodging her Qs. Um, it's it's pretty hard to actually outplay a Kiana because she can like use her E to get close. She can kind of point and click her way into doing damage. But then she's still a melee champion and she's not that strong early game, so you can still kind of take advantage of her. And I also want to highlight like Electrocute because I took Electrocute into this matchup and it's about going for these short trades and eventually getting the kill. So you want to go for like a couple short trades, couple Electrocute procs, get them low enough and then go for the kill. So then here we started off, I'm going to start chipping away at her health here. So I Q her, I missed two minions because I thought the wave was going to get hit by the Q, but it didn't. So that was kind of unfortunate. And now here, Kiana actually hits me with the auto attack, which is completely fine. What ends up happening here is the mage minions are going to start hitting the Kiana and she's actually going to take a lot of health. You can do this in a lot of matchups as well. Melee, ranged, both work. And not only that, but I'm going to hit her with the Q as well. So then she takes a lot of damage here and she actually ends up popping the potion. And this is going to be really important because I still have two potions and she has one, which means that in the long run, I have more sustain and I have more health. So I can trade with her aggressively knowing that I have that one potion. So then we're just trying to fight for level two here. She hits level two. I sit back knowing that I'm not going to hit two first. And then I hit two here. And then now we're looking for an electrocute trade. So I'm, again, I'm getting aggressive because I know I have a potion over her. And so here, Kiana's going to walk up for this minion. And so I'm going to use that to get aggressive and proc electrocute on her. QE auto, pick up dagger, don't hit it with the dagger, but notice how I just go auto for auto and I just keep hitting her. Now this is good. I just popped my one potion. She is out of potions. So this is super good for me. So in the long run, I'm just slowly trying to choke her out. And now Kiana's pretty low. And now here we're looking for another level spike, level three. So level three, I can start doing something. So then I'm going to slowly hit level two. Notice how I'm not really pushing the wave because I want her to walk up. Notice how the cannon's getting low. So when the cannon's getting low like this, it's going to make Kiana want to walk up. So then I could take advantage of that. I hit level three and then I immediately go in and she's going to try to Q to get the cannon. And then I shaved her. And now at this point I have electrocute. So I go in for the EQ ignite. And then she's dead. So here we have it in real time. So again, we're just starting off the landing phase. I wanted the Q to bounce to the front, but it didn't. So I lost two minions there. And now I walk up for this farm aggressively and she actually hits me with the auto attack, which is exactly what I wanted her to do. She takes some uh, mage minion damage and then I hit her with the Q. And now we're just fighting for level two. That's why I picked up the dagger and she hits level two first. And I hit level two first here. And remember she popped the potion here. So I'm just gonna go for an aggressive trade I'm pretty much going for an aggressive trade using the potion that I have. So then, as long as she can't all in me, it's completely fine. QE auto. I just start autoing her. Because the more health she loses, the better for me. Just try to keep her low. Now she pops her last potion. And so now I'm going to hit level 3 here. I'm going to pop the last potion. So I hit level 3 and I'm like looking for an angle. And now I want Kiana to walk up. She goes in for the cannon and we have our electrocute proc. So we go in, proc electrocute and we kill her. So it's about these multiple traits, but also kind of using other factors 
in the in the lane in the matchup so that you know you can find a way to jump in and go in and kill her so here we have another example with electrocute matchup and this is against the range champion this time where we're gonna go for these short trades with electrocutes and we're gonna try to stick with the game plan here of trying to play around the champion so when it comes to Lux, it's a game of dodgeball. The more you get poked, the less opportunities open up for you because you don't have the health to go in and get aggressive. Also, when you get hit by Lux Q, her snare, it's, it's gonna make it hard for you to actually go in and continue to do damage. And she's gonna be able to trade all of her damage back. So that's the main thing you wanna look out for, it's her Q. So then we're also gonna initiate the same game plan where we're going to be just hitting the electrocutes and then backing off and then doing it again. So here, she actually hits level two. And now I know I'm going to hit level two here. So what I can do is I can throw the Q onto a minion and I can see her positioning. She looks like she wants to go in for a trade while I'm level one. So she has the high ground now, but then I'm going to hit level two when I kill one minion. So then I'm going to try to hit two, dodge Lux's abilities, and then try to hit electrocute at the same time. So this is like a really tight opening. She walks up, Q, dodge the Q. So look how I have the dagger set up, right? So I'm just going to go in for the electrocute. So that's one trade. And she only hits me with E auto, where I hit her with Electric Q and Q and E. So I actually came out on that trade. Lux is pretty squishy too. So then here, now she's pretty low. And you know, every time she pokes you, it's gonna, it's gonna hurt. It's gonna make it hard for you to go in. So you don't wanna take too much poke, okay? But again, we're looking for these level spikes as well. So then here, I hit level three. And I see an opening to go for a trade here, because if you see here, this minion's kind of low, so. I can use this minion to have her walk up close to where I can cue this minion and then have it land on her. So then that's my angle to throw the Q. And then I go for the Q, E, W. This way I can pick up two daggers and then I'll be able to jump out immediately. I also try to dodge a little bit on the W as well. So that because Lux Q is a straight line. So I have to play around that. So this adds a little extra layer of like evasiveness, right? And then on the tip of the dagger that I pick up, that's when I E away. So it makes it really hard for her to actually trade with me. This is really good into a bunch of skill shot champs as well. So then here, I see something happening top lane. So I go and I try to like bait Lux in to like come into the bush. I try to like fake the row. And then I want Lux to come in. She's scared that I'm going to go up to top lane and help them out. So then she's coming up, but then, you know, she has a hunch. And so she wards. But I don't have my abilities up right now, so I can't go for the kill. So then sadly, we have to back off here. Now, if you see the wave position, the wave position is really good. It's close to my tower and it's going to push into me, which is going to force Lux to try to push the wave into the tower. Or else I'm just going to hold this freeze. The thing is, Lux is really low. So she's going to have more of an incentive to walk up to try to like clear the wave. So I can use this and position aggressively. And if she ever goes into my E range, then I'm just going to kill her. So then I wait for her to walk up. And again, she walks up. She wants to clear the wave. E W. Now, again, we still have to play around the Lux Q, right? So then when I go in for the E W, she feels threatened. She's going to throw the Q because she knows that if she doesn't hit this Q, she's dead. So she panic Qs. And again, I use my W to try to be evasive to make sure that, you know, I can dodge the one skill shot that I need to dodge. And then go for the ignite and try to all in. E, flash Q, I knew she was going to flash there. And then E, and then we kill Lux. So here it is in real time. So then right now it's just about dodging her E. I'm like kind of sitting back, making sure that I don't get hit. And I'm about to hit level 2. She hits level 2, she's going to walk up here. I know I'm going to hit level 2 here. Q, dodge it, hit the electric Q. Win the trade. So now I just back up. And now Lux is pretty low. She doesn't pop a potion here. I get hit there, which kind of sucks. And then now I'm going to hit level 3. And I'm going to use that minion. To set up the Q. Dodge away with W. Pick up both daggers, jump out. So that's another good trade. I see the fight happening top. So I fake the roam. She sees the hunch. I don't have my abilities up. 
But then I know she has to push us in. So then I walk up, dodge the Q with W. And then go in after the flash. And then we're able to pick up the Lux. All right, so next we have a Conquer example. So with Conquer, I go Longsword because it gives me the AD Adaptive, which will allow me to do more damage with my auto attacks. And also Conquer is really good for like all inning. Now, when it comes to Silas, you also got to assess the champion. Silas, when he hits his E, that's when he can do a lot of damage and it's really hard to win trades with his E. But if he ever misses his E, then you're able to go in and try to just like find the all in. But you have to find a way for you to continue to deal damage to the guy. This example, he kind of monkeyed, but I think it's a really good example because, you know, it just shows how important his E is, right? So then here, Silas does have like the, the high ground because, you know, it's really hard to trade with Silas. It has to be done in a very specific way because he could just sustain up with his W. Uh, Sejuani comes, tries to pressure. We don't really get much damage off, but we get a little bit, so that's fine. Now, if you see with a wave here, the wave is pushing into me, so again, Silas has to walk up. So we're gonna use this to maybe find an angle to get aggressive. So then we kind of hold the wave here. Now I'm gonna hit level three. I'm just gonna hold it here. I'm gonna thin the wave out a little bit so it doesn't crash too hard. Silas comes back into lane. And again, trading with Silas right now is like pretty hard. Trading like ability for ability is gonna be hard unless you can dodge like Silas E. Now here, this is where he monkeyed, okay? So let me show you. So I Q, I E, and he misses the Q. So that's one ability down, so that's good. Walk over, and now here, he E's like the other way. So this is the main thing that I have to look out for, right? So when it comes to Conquer, you gotta watch out for that one ability that will cuck you or that one ability that will help them win the trade because you're just trying to stat check them at this point. If you can get rid of the ability that allows you to stat check, then you can just go in and continue to auto attack. So then here, Silas absolutely monkeyed. He's hitting a ghost. He's hitting someone in another rank game. And so we're gonna take that all the way, right? Auto. Just go in. Yeah, nullifying order, that was kind of scary. But we were able to finish him off. All right, so Silas comes back into lane. We have the lane frozen. I set up the Q. E auto. He E's the other way. I'm like, okay, I'm in. I'm all in. I'm going in, hitting everything. Optimize with the auto E autos and finish him off. Now, I think that this does bring up a good point when it comes to certain matchups where, you know, Silas matchup's pretty hard. And I know that he monkeyed that one ability that he needed in order for him to actually like win trade with me but sometimes just going in and applying pressure can create scenarios like this where the enemies like just need to respond and so you're kind of testing the enemy and making sure that they play it right because if they don't play it right then you're just going to straight up kill them so the moral of the story is apply pressure all right so the last example is going to be against cassiopeia so this is going to be another matchup where it's range and it's going to be conquer so with Cassiopeia, you can actually all in her if you just like dodge her Q and don't let her get her empowered ease off because that's where a lot of the damage comes from. So my goal is to try to fight her when her Q is down or when I don't get hit by the Q. So you could dodge it or you could just like have her whiff and then try to punish. And again, with Conquer, you're looking for the all ins or you're looking for extended trades. Cassiopeia is pretty good in extended trades as long as she hits her Q. So I mean, here I'm going to show you like an example. Now here I'm just farming. And trying not to get hit by Q, because I don't want get to get hit by the QE. So then I throw a Q here to last hit. And then I have the dagger set up here, right? So then I have an angle to jump in and punish the Cassiopeia. So what I can do is I could like kind of walk up here and try to like bait Cass into using Q while my dagger is here. Because if she Qs me while I'm here, then I have the angle to immediately jump in and try to punish. So then here I'm walking up for the farm. She Qs and I immediately E. So I was pretty much ready for it. And we're able to get like an extended trade. Now on the way out, you can see that she's going to do some damage here because she hits the Q. She hits the Q and I kind of wanted to save my E to like punish the cast and I might have gone in again, but um, I decided not to. And then I foolishly get hit by the Q. So look, look at the damage here. She hits me with two E's and I'm like super chunked, right? So you got to be careful. So I mean, the wave is still here in front of me and I can still try to go for the punish. Now again, I'm still watching out for a Q. 
So again here, I'm like walking up to her, kind of in a range because I know I can dodge it with Shunpo. And I'm trying to test Cassiopeia like, hey, like cue me so that I can fight you. Here. Boom, jump over the Q, and then I immediately set up the Q, right? Wait for my E to come up, E, auto. And now here, again, Cassiopeia Q cooldown is pretty low. So then I gotta constantly be playing around the Cassiopeia Q when I go in. So then here I go in for a really long stride, like towards the Cassiopeia, making it difficult for her to hit me. The movement here is gonna be really important, especially into champions like this. You see that? So then I like moved right into Cassiopeia. It'd be we really weird in that position if she like cued herself. So then I went for like a really weird movement to try to trick her cue. And now I just start autoing her and then kill her with Conquer. So again, we found that extended trade and it's just about being able to put yourself in a position where you can actually fight her long term. Okay, so let's play it in real time. So Cassiopeia is obviously going to try to cue me and I got to try to dodge it as I'm trying to farm. And then I have the Q set up here from last hitting and I see an angle. If she cues, I jump over it, going for a trade. I get hit by Q here, which kind of sucks. So I get chunked. And then now I'm still doing the same game plan, trying to dodge the cues. So then here I walk up to try to bait her to cue me and try to reactively dodge it. Boom. Set up the Q, go in and I have to dodge the Q again. So I go in for a really long stride. I go in, auto attack, and I kill her. So when it comes to solo killing, it's not just about, you know, going in and killing. You have to take into account a bunch of different factors in order for you to actually kill someone. And so, I mean, I wasn't able to go through every example because there's a lot of factors when it comes to these kind of things. So I want you to try to keep your eyes peeled. Make sure that whenever you do go for solo kills that you try to assess like what actually happened. And if you successfully get a kill, like why? And if you didn't, then why? So always question it, always look through it and see if you can actually find, you know, your answers. And hopefully next time when you go in for a solo kill, you actually do it successfully and you do it consistently.